So I guess we'll show the end of the score part here first. Here we go. All righty. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Motion, Part 22 Lines. In today's episode, we re-entered by talking about the theme of lines of demarcation, which is a theme that's been on our minds since late last year relating to our real-life work. And the thought is it would be nice to add this to our composing work because, as we've discussed before, our composing and our work interact a lot. We're getting new insights. Um, we are most definitely, we further reflected, working out methods for composing using and annotating music for use in movies. Um, you saw us do a movie in the last series. Um, and then we thought about another theme we've had since early last year, the world turned upside down. Um, we've been fitting our animations to our music up till now. In this series now, we're also fitting our music to our animations. Um, another thing is we're talking further about attack, sustain, delay, release, although apparently it's really called attack, delay, sustain, release. There it is up to ADSR. And we looked up how many darn instruments are available in our program that we compose with, and there's about 1,100. We counted them, 1,100. So today we use something called a sweep synthesizer and something called a choir synthesizer and um, we'll show you more about there's the choir synth right there and then the sweep will be somewhere over here in the s's but it would be really nice if instead of guessing which ones to try it would be really nice to have uh, a comparison table of uh, what they are and particularly their attack uh, sustained delay release envelopes what else happened today? We got a really evocative question from chat about what genre are we composing in, which triggered us into a reflective looking back over the last several series. At one point we said we were contemporary classical, then we played a piece that's orchestral contemporary, then a piece that was like a solo, then the movie music we've been talking about, structural tonal, Electronic ambient, which you're going to hear some today, choral, experimental lyric. We even had jazz and art song pieces. So I don't know. Maybe we're contemporary explorative experimental. Maybe that's a new category. So anyway, what we did is we decided to start working with the 2772 scale. And you may or may not recall that this scale right here is the fourth of the four scales we want to work with in this series and it had not yet had anything composed with it but now now we can say that we have um, started you know lines of demarcation part one <laughs> so we're not sure maybe we're going to add the other three scales to this and, and part two three four but at least we have composed something for that scale that scale and that scale in this series already so that's the one that we worked on today and what we did is we went to the tonality reference area, as one does. And then just to kind of get things launched, we played the scales that go with it. Um, the minor major, major, and then the full scale, and another, another note in there. But that's how we started. And then we added the choir synth, and we're going to solo the choir synth so you can hear what that does first of all. So the choir synth sounds like this. So those are the scales. Now what we want you to pay attention to is the attack time. The minute it plays it's ba ba So anything that's a fast piece of music, you need a fast attack. Otherwise, you'll never hear it. How do we know that? Because the sweep synthesizer, now we're going to listen to the second line, which is down here. It starts low. Now, 
So if you don't give it at least a full half note, you'll never hear it. You'll just hear uh, a very soft uh, and and we tried we accidentally played that one on the fast notes and you couldn't even hear them because there was no time for it to get past the very very low volume of the attack. The beauty of putting these together, if you know what's going to happen, a fast and a slow attack, uh, you get this. It's as if you hear a first note in the bar and then a second beat. So there's almost a two beat melody per bar coming by whatever you heard first in the chord, followed by that the final reaching of its high volume of the note in the bottom. I hope that made sense. Anyway, so that's why we're so interested in attack, sustain, delay, release envelopes, because not only are we changing uh, across the entire piece of music, um, we, we had a great way of saying that. The ASDR means that one note by itself can have multiple volumes. So this C note, I'm going to solo it again just to kind of... The C has a low and a high volume. The same note without any piano, mezzo forte, no crescendo, no decrescendo. We could mimic it by putting, you know, you know what I mean by those. Um, we could put those on there. We could put these, uh, where is it? You know, make it louder, make it softer. This thing, louder, softer. Uh, but we'd have to draw it out and it would be meticulous note by note by note, whereas just by changing the the uh, instrumentation. Now, there's another thing going on that you can hardly hear unless you pay attention to it. As it gets louder, it's getting more brassier. Listen to this. It's going and that that yeah is high frequency so it's also if you did the frequency spectrum of this which is like the fundamental and the harmonic and this that and the other thing it's it's clamping it down to be very low frequencies and then it's opening up the attack the attack envelope for the frequencies is opening up at the same time as the volume. So there's a volume and there's a frequency spectrum, which is what this says here. There's a volume, and let's highlight that because that is the secret to making this thing uh, even more expressive, taking basically relatively simple sequences. I and mean, we were playing this as just straight old piano and you've heard those forever in this series, but when you minute, you intelligently start picking instruments to work with. Now, certain real life instruments have, you know, slow and long attacks. And piano is a very fast attack. It's always a fast attack. And that's why it's bang, bang, bang. But here we're getting that plus the frequency. Anyway, we're very excited about all that, as you can tell. So we did all that and, um, we began to work on a four scale score. We started with the 2772. We did all eight lines. We called it part one and we recorded. Then we went and did an animation. And in our animation, we reused uh, the basic idea that we had started in the improvisation two, one, which was the scale, two scales before this. And let's, let's show you what's happening the first time. This one, you may recall, we did already. And this is using the, uh, 
we're, we're actually, we could solo it. Let's solo that. You, we're playing the whole thing right now. Let us solo um, just the cadence. And the cadence, if you recall, the cadence will rewind. Is this. So this is fast attack and a lot of variation in volume, which is what is making it pop up and down like that. Let's reset the position and now let's solo the um, the backbone, which as you may recall is our, the backbone we've added and we gave it a light orange and the backbone comes across like, well, first of all, there's no backbone at the beginning. So let's let it crank through the first four seconds. Then we come into the backbone, inching forward. And you could see that the trails were going and what we wanted to do was basically put it all together. We also learned a quick way to reset the position. You may have noticed that was inching forward a little bit at a time and we we kept resetting four places at once. All we have to do is reset any one of these things in the path and everything goes back to the beginning. So now we will let the whole thing play and you get this. In fact, we're going to let you, now we're just going to play uh, play this for you, and this will bring you home. This is the entire piece that we're calling, um, uh, what are we calling this? Part one of the four scales, the sweep and choir synth. So here we go. <laughs> So that concludes today's stream. What we like about this animation and about the piece is basically the 277255 scale has 20 total chords in it. We were able to again distribute all 20 chords into one piece of music consisting of eight lines plus an introduction and, um, and pick out a backbone, uh, a more complex backbone than we're used to doing. We also even annotated the backbone and and did what we called um, horizontal and vertical harmony, which is a thing we've had in previous streams. For example, um, the the cadences up here are all subdominance, so it's a driftance, but the notes of the backbone are also uh, no modes and no actives, so the, the horizontal melody is also a chord. If you took it... I can't even hear it, you know why? Because it's... <laughs> The synthesizer. I'm just clicking it. It's too short an attack to even hear it. But um, if you if you simply highlight the note, the four notes that are in there, you can see that there's a chord defined, like that. And that happens to be a G3, one three ambivalent chord. And um, it's the first time we've started uh, the idea of labeling. Uh, 
the the backbone harmony which is the whole line at once compared to the vertical harmony which is the bar above it so that was cool but also was cool if you recall at all we learned this really quick way to reset the points um, look at how the the two colors overlap and turn magenta it's almost like two different sky plane doing sky writings in purple and orange and where their colors overlap you get a third color and also because the orange is popping up on the second half of the bar and the purple popped up on the first half of the bar you're getting a lot more of those kind of diagonal cross patterns so our ideas for next time are more adding music to videos we shot another video today but we're not sure that's going to be one of them but we've got more videos and more the uh machinima that we can make more composing in the four scales like we did today and our good old friend to be determined shout out to black strish who came back and manu floda floa who also came back it's great to see you again tune in next time to see what happens do take care do come back and do keep on streaming